<laughs> Did Kathy tell you, or or uh, or you just yes. saw that on the screen? Kathy faxed yes, you. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a fax machine, and Kathy said because she sends out a lot of faxes, uh, like thirty to forty faxes a day. She's on that machine most of the day. Mm -hmm. I tell her email me, but she often won't. She'll get my email, then she'll print it out, and then she'll type something up, and then fax that back to me. Sometimes it's pretty, pretty frustrating, but. You get what you pay for, I suppose. <laughs> uh, how's it going? Fine, fine. Very good. Good to hear. What about you? Good to hear. I, I'm good. Fine. I'm fine. I've got my coffee here. My uh, my rad dad, my rad dad rad. coffee mug. Wow. Yeah. Rad dad. What is that? Rad is like a, it's like a 1980s surfer word for cool rats rad like radical uh, and uh, so radical. rad dad is a cool dad which i'm not but um <laughs> i aspire to be i have cats i'm technically a cat dad as you are mm -hmm. right you have cats too not yet and that's whoa, whoa, whoa. i thought you had a cat <sighs> yes i i i expected to have a cat since a, a long time but next week, it will be uh, true. So how are you Finally. going to get it? Are you just going to drive on the street and just for, grab the first stray cat you see walking around <laughs> or just jump on no, it my, and take it home? My, my aunt uh, had a, a pregnant cat. Mm -hmm. and, she, and she had uh, five uh, calves. calves. Uh, a lit we could call it a litter. Yeah, a litter of cats. Ah, okay. Interestingly, the word for what the cats poop in and the group of the cats that the cat has uh, is the same word. Which is very weird. So the, the like the sand that cats poop in is called cat litter, but if a cat has six cats, then that whole group of cats is called a litter of cats. And that's weird. Wow. I just realized that. That's very strange. <laughs> yeah. Why is that? I have no idea. Um, do you have a preference? Do you? Oh, it, it is difficult to choose. Uh, I, I, we have to choose. We, we thought we want a female. Yeah. But the last time we went to my aunt's uh, house, the female uh, was terrified and, and she ran uh, behind uh, a desk and started to, 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 to make a very strange uh, noise. <laughs> I don't know what happened to, to her. Can I give some advice as a very experienced cat owner? Uh, so I, I, growing up, I had outdoor cats because we I grew up kind of in a farm type place, like 65 cats from age zero to 18. Wow. wow. Yeah. So I have a lot of experience with you know, cat personality types. And um, please, nobody watching this, take this the wrong way, okay? I'm not, this is not a comment about human women, but female cats are nuts. I mean, they're, they're they are, <laughs> generally speaking, there's a, they have that sort of thing going on. They're closer to nature. They're more wild in general. And um, personality-wise, I've always found that male cats are just kind of chill and cool and easygoing and kind of fun to hang out with. Uh, I had a cat named Carl. He loved to just sit on the... He would s sit on the sofa and watch a movie with you. Uh, he, he loved... His favorite movie was uh, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. He, every time that movie was on, he would sit and watch the whole thing. I've I've just generally found that uh, the male cats are a little more um, I don't know cool I guess is the word for it. Um, with okay. humans, I would say it's the opposite. I would say women are a lot cooler than than men in general. M men kind of kind of weird, but uh, <laughs> for cats, go with the boy. 
That's my opinion. Okay, okay. And what do you think about, uh, we, we live in a, a two, two room uh, depart, uh, apartment, right? Wait, 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 wait. Uh, you, you mean female have, cats? Yeah. Uh, no, 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 no. Are we talking about humans uh, or are we talking about cats? My, my, my girlfriend and I, yeah. we live in a, um, a the apartment with two rooms. Yeah. Right? Two bedrooms Only or two, two rooms. rooms? Two rooms. One, one bedroom, one living room, uh, okay. dash, uh, kitchen. Living room, kitchen area. Yeah. Uh, so, what do you think about having two cats here? Is, 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 uh, is not recommended? What do you think? I think if they're cool cats, I think it would be okay. I lived in a two bedroom apartment. Uh, for six years in New York, but one of the bedrooms was closed almost all the time. So they had basically the space of a one bedroom apartment, uh, so exactly what you're describing. And mm -hmm. they were fine. They, they, they were totally fine. It was, it was no problem. Okay. Yes. Because they say that, uh, having only one is like sad for, for him. I don't know if it's sad, but yeah it, it can be nice to have two yeah for sure for for mm. sure i yeah i would say go go with two it's not harder to go with two and can i give one more cat recommendation yes okay i need because it. i it's something that i wished i had done i'm gonna i will recommend a product to you because uh with a cat you have to clean their litter box twice a day or maybe once a day at the, you know, but you have to clean it really often. Mm -hmm. But there's this thing called the litter robot. And <laughs> it's kind of expensive, but it is the best thing I've ever purchased. It's amazing. You only have to empty the bottom tray once a week. With two cats, I have two cats. You only have to empty the bottom tray once a week. You, I, so before I was constantly thinking about scooping and scooping and breathing in the dust. It's just, it's, it's so annoying, but life is totally different. After I got that robot, I highly recommend <laughs> getting this robot. And you might say, oh, it's, you know, it's too expensive, but the amount of stress is, it's totally worth it. A hundred percent. It's it's like a little, uh, how, how it is? It's a litter it's a cat litter box. It's a it is ah. a robot that they go inside of, and when they're done, it knows that they're done, and it turns to empty it and turns back, and ah. it's life changing, life changing. <laughs> okay, I will find it if it is available uh, here. I think I it probably know. is. I think it probably is. My main periods of my life, I measure that's one of the milestones. Like, got married, moved back to America, and then litter robot. <laughs> <laughs> it's a milestone for me. Uh, okay. Well, I uh, so today uh, we've got some people joining. That's great. Welcome. Um, we're going to be talking about... Well, the general theme for today is is friendship, but I want to get into a, a few different things. I want to talk about uh, some cultural norms because we come from two different places. You're from uh, you're from Argentina. I'm from the United States. So I would I would like to explore some some cultural differences a bit, uh, and then I have some other stuff we'll get to later. Um, I do have a couple of phrases that I want to share. There is a word that is interesting that is used in three different ways uh, that I want to talk about. Uh, and then I think we can take... Last week I did a culture quiz and I failed miserably. So I thought it would be interesting if you could to see if you could pass the American culture quiz. Okay. Uh, okay. So, well... Um, Maybe just for context, what was your, could you talk, describe your your growing up experience a little bit? Are you a city boy, country boy? Um, 
Uh, are you normal? Are you a normal Argentinian? Are you abnormal? Uh, yes. And then, and then we can get into some specific topics. <laughs> yes. No. No. I. I'm not the most uh, normal, and it is interesting because uh, we um, in my city, that is the capital city of Argentina, many people think uh, the way we are is the way Argentinians are. And you're but talking about that is not so how would I say that in in English? Can I, what is the adjective for people who are from Buenos Aires? Um, because I I'm tempted to say Buenos Aires, but that sounds weird. Yes, <laughs> uh, we 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 say we are um, porteños, porteños, because we live in the uh, uh, port. port. Oh, okay. Yes, portions. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Potatoes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, yes, we we have a, a very typical uh, character character, and uh, yes, many people here the uh, think that Argent Argentine people is the way we in Buenos Aires are, but that is not true, and also here in Buenos Aires, I'm not the, the most typical uh, person. Yes, I am not, because uh, I, for example, I don't like to play soccer. Oh, yeah, that's um, a, is that illegal to not like soccer? <laughs> it's illegal. Yeah. Yes. Can you go they to jail for that? I am not. Yes. <laughs> that's serious. Uh, yes. Uh, well, when I was a child, go to sh go to to jail was like to be in the in the in the football when you have to catch the the ball in the the goalie uh, the goalie uh, yeah the goalie the goal goalkeeper yes. goaltender yeah yes to be there was uh, terrified me. I, Why I are you afraid to, of getting to, hit to, by a ball? Uh, yeah, yes. Oh, but I mean, uh. uh a uh, a football or a soccer ball is not that painful, right? I was the same I when I was know, a kid it, playing baseball, but a baseball is a lot harder than a than a soccer ball. It, it was it was painful to me, okay. but I have a, a a story with that because my father, when he had like my age, he was playing soccer and he got a, a, a kick in his eye. And he lost uh, his vision with uh, that eye. Completely, had, uh, still. Completely, completely. Yes. And, and, Wait, and, you mean and a, he was through a foot? A foot kicked him in the eye, or a ball hit him in the eye? Yes. No foot, oh, okay. because uh, there is like a move wh wh when the player like makes like a jump and tries to kick in reverse. Uh, right. Well. And we, oh yes. no! So it, the point hit that the eye went into the eye with the tip of the foot. Oh, exactly. that's hard to think about. I don't like that. Okay, yeah. and he was through like a very uh, extreme uh, surgery, where they took off the eye when he was awakened. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. And, and he knew he he. He was awakening, uh, like wa watching with one eye, the other eye, <laughs> when they were trying to to fix it. That's horrifying. So, does he have a glass yeah. eye now? Does he have a false no, eye? No, no, he has like a like a little little eye because he lo he lost a, a liquid. Ah, okay. So he but so totally blind in one eye. Yes. <laughs> can he drive? Uh, so, can he drive and stuff? Yes, he can with a special um, a mirror, a singular okay. special mirror that is required to to drive in that situation. Mm. And uh, uh, when uh, when I was a child, I knew that story. So I think that's the reason why I was terrified. Now it all makes sense. Football. Honestly, it all makes sense. <laughs> That's that's horrifying. I uh, I never had that kind of traumatic experience, but for me, I think it was similar with with baseball. I tried to convince myself 
when I was a kid that I really liked normal sports, American football, not soccer, but American football, baseball, mm -hmm. and I basketball, and I played them as a kid. Um, and then in high school, I just realized I don't like any of these stupid sports. I'm going <laughs> to, except for golf and ping pong. So I, I like golf. I do like golf. Um, but I was always afraid when I was a kid of getting hit by a baseball because that actually, that stings badly. If, if a pitcher is throwing a baseball at you and that hits you in the arm, that that's very hard. That can leave a big bruise. And I was, I was afraid of, I was always afraid of that. So I was never particularly good at baseball. Um, because I was fake. I would, I never, I didn't actually like it. I just wanted to be normal and, uh, so I I thought I liked it, but I didn't. You can't you can't get uh, hurt uh, in golf or in ping pong, right? You can get hurt in golf. Uh, only your soul can be hurt in golf. But okay. I would I was a very when I played golf in high school I I was a very um, psychologically aggressive. I was usually the one trying to make other people feel. Uh, uh, nervous or upset in golf. That was like my challenge. I used to bring an extra golf club, an old one that was like $5 in my bag um, in case just to intimidate people. I would sometimes if I did something slightly wrong or missed something, I would grab that golf club. I knew which one it was. I would grab it and I would break it over my leg and throw it in the lake. And just to sort of make them think like, okay, I'm golfing with a crazy person now. And then that would, that would mess up because golf is a very mental game. It would mess them up. And that was part of my strategy. Wow. Yeah. And it was, it was, a, a, was it your invention? I think I, I think I invented that idea. Yeah. 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 I would each, I would, I bought like a bunch of old golf clubs that were very cheap just for breaking purposes. Uh, it made, makes me remember that advice uh, Homer Simpson made to Bart that he had to 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 throw uh, sand to the eyes of of uh, Malcolm. Do you remember? No. Is that his? Is that the bully? The, the bully? Who 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 does he throw? I I I haven't watched Simpsons in a long uh, time. <laughs> Bart Simpson was a uh, 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 had the the bully the bully the bully boy that yeah. was bother, bothering him, and Bart uh, in uh, asked asked Homer for advice what to yeah. do, and Homer said uh, grab a uh, sand and throw it to the eyes of of the boy. Is that an old episode? Like a very, yes, very old. Okay. One of one of the first. Yes, it, those are the only uh, episodes I I quote. Or, yes. Yeah, I I haven't watched Simpsons in so long. I barely remember anything. The only thing I remember is that that there was a roller coaster called the Tooth Chipper, uh, and when they would go down the hill, it would it would break your teeth. Uh, that's the only thing I can remember. <laughs> well, well, uh, that, 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 this is interesting because I'm talking with you. I, I, th this is the second time I quote The Simpsons. And here uh, in, in, my, in my city with my friends, everybody knows every detail of The Simpsons. And I am one of, of those that knows the little. My friends think I, I don't like Simpsons. So it is interesting. I am exactly the same way with uh, South Park because uh, everybody I know seems to always be quoting South Park. And I actually don't like South Park um, ah. because I, I find the voices annoying. The voices of South Park, <laughs> they're just all annoying. So I can't listen to all the voices. So everybody's always quoting South Park and in college, it was a big problem for me because everyone was always talking about South Park, and I I, I always had no idea what they were talking about. And not and not the Simpsons. Not the Simpsons. I feel like the oh. Simpsons. I it, to me, it seems like the Simpsons are a uh, generation older than me. 
like the wow. yeah not a boomers yeah. but middle between between gener- uh, millennials and boomers i feel like that the simpsons is for them and i'm in the south park generation for me it is interesting i think it it is because it was cheaper for our uh, tv bro- broadcast uh, channels to put uh, the simpsons every time all all day long so uh, we watch it, it a lot in my generation. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, yeah, I think a lot of people still watch The Simpsons in mind. It just doesn't feel like a generational thing. I don't know why. It seems like my... But, but for, for example, Sunday, you turn on your TV and put a Fox channel and it is The Simpsons uh, live? I think so, yeah. Ah, I think okay, so. Okay. I don't know because I haven't watched regular TV in also in ten years, fifteen years. So oh, okay, I great. I have a TV, but it's not connected to television, any networks or anything. I just use it to watch uh, Netflix and stuff and play PlayStation, <laughs> <laughs> which is what TVs are for. I think that yeah, having a constant flow of stuff coming in to my brain that I don't have control over. I don't like that. I don't like the mm. that feeling of just turning on some channel and then whatever someone else decides mm. to project into my brain will just be there. Mm. It's like I'm not in I'm not in charge. I like to say, okay, I'm going to watch this movie on Netflix right now and that's what I want to do. And when I'm done, mm-hmm. I'm done. And I think that I have that way I have a little more control over over it. Yes, but always, always knowing that you need to choose what to to watch, it it also can be uh, annoying. No, don't you think? Well, yes, exactly. It's annoying, and so because it's annoying, it makes me not bother bother to do it much less. So that's another benefit, is because I mm. so I maybe maybe twice a week do I think I'm gonna watch this because it's annoying, right? So that means I only watch two things a week, which is also good. So it's a I I'm mm. using that to my advantage. I don't want to watch more. I wouldn't like to. <laughs> Fine. Yeah. Um. Oh, I want to get into maybe some interesting cultural differences, and maybe now we can speak not from personal. Uh, experience but well personal experience but not personal preference but just a taking a sort of general view of the culture your culture mm-hmm. right and mm-hmm. i will try to do the same thing um what well maybe maybe i can start i, I want to first go into the the ideal what people tend to have as the ideal life um I think in my when my parents were growing up or when my parents were young adults the idea of going to college and then getting a good job and then buying a house and just having a normal life in the suburbs was kind of not being wealthy necessarily but just being comfortable was kind of the ideal and it was it was very attainable back then because university was super cheap and you could get a good paying job so that one person could work and support a family of two or three and make the house payments and pay for the car and not and be fine comfortable Hmm. but i don't know what happened well i do know what happened but it's a it's complicated but now we find ourselves in a time where the idea of just going to college means usually like eighty to a hundred thousand dollars in student loans. I know people who have two hundred thousand dollars of student loans, and Ooh. then getting to the house, maybe deciding. A lot of people my age don't want to even buy a house because they're still trying to pay off their student loans. And so the the um, the ideal has changed a lot in from my from my parents' generation to mine. Before that ideal mm-hmm. was yeah, do the normal American thing, 
get a house, get a couple cars, have some kids, work one job. Now, I think the <laughs> ideal is to kind of escape. It seems like the ideal is no longer to achieve that normal. The ideal is to get out of the normal into not necessarily extreme wealth, but to to escape from debt. I think now is the is the, like the ideal life is to get out of debt because you either have tons of debt in order to look normal, but actually you're in debt, so you look normal, but you're not, right? Or you make so much money that you don't have to think about money period right it's kind of one or the other and that middle area where you're just a normal person with a normal house it seems less realistic now because the normal person mm. with the normal house is in insane debt and they're not happy every day they're struggling financially so that i feel like now people are looking toward i don't even want to have one career a lot of people are starting their own look. businesses huh Sorry, you are you are saying one one word I don't get debt, debt, what? owing money, D E B T debt. Ah, ah, okay, okay, okay. Like, so many people in my generation are in extreme debt. They owe hundreds of thousands of dollars, not just their homes, <clears throat> but car car payments and university payments, and um, so I think. People want to just get out of that. But in order to get out of that, you have to almost become rich, not normal. And so mm. now I think people want to find other ways to make money. So not just have a job, but constantly change careers, look for side hustles, uh, side not necessarily side jobs, but other ways to make money. So now I think in my generation, the norm is wh what set of things can I do to get out of this and to mm. escape the feeling of being constantly chained down by debt? Because it's a big problem in my generation. Wow. Incredible. I, I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it, it was easier for you to have a common life. Oh, no, it's much harder, much harder. M many people I know aren't even this. They, they don't even want to have kids. They don't want to have kids because it's too yes. expensive. Yes, <laughs> they don't. Even, I, I think many people that. still live with their parents. It used to be a shame to still live with your parents, but a lot of people will mm. continue. Now we're normalizing living with parents because uh, <clears throat> if you rent an apartment and you have to pay your student loans and you have to, it's it's so much. Wow. Yeah. So that's, I mean, that's kind of how it's changed from one generation to the so next. So now uh, it is normal, uh, it will be normal to not, not to have kids and live with the parents until the 50s well i think a lot of people are delaying having kids earlier like my, my parents had kids when they were in their early 20s that idea mm -hmm. now for my generation is crazy like why would you have kids in your 20s <laughs> what's wrong yes, with you yes yes it's like a 10 years delayed it is exactly mm. yeah 30s are 20s now Yes, exactly. Yes. And 20s don't exist. <laughs> <laughs> right. So how well what about you? I'm just curious. What's the what's the ideal? I I think it it is it is similar but different because uh, all all what you have said about uh, how it was for the, the previous generations is is it's the same here but yes we 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 don't have debts but we have this thing about inflation you know well that's very recent though well how, how when did that no, start we, 
uh, it started like in the in the in the seventies. Oh, okay, okay. I didn't realize that. So, wait, inflation yeah. as a is slow inflation or rapid inflation? Uh, it give varies. me a his, give uh, me a history lesson. I'm 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 here for it. Yes. Well, we 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 started to to have debt as a country. I think that is the difference. You have de debt like individuals, but we have debt as a country. Now so... we have both. We have both. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> we have debt all yes, the way around. You have you have debt as a country, but you don't need to pay that. Debt. Right. <laughs> because no nobody. How are you going to make me pay? You, How are you going to make us pay? pay? <laughs> I don't want to pay. <laughs> if you try to make me pay, I'll exactly. drone strike you. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. So uh, 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 here, uh, what happened is that in the 70s, with that dictatorship, you watch it, uh, that video, do you remember? Uh, that our dictatorship of the uh, 70s, that was a uh, right. Uh, uh, right, uh, right wing, ah, wing, yes. right wing, yeah, right, right wing, but it was supported uh, internationally, you know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, we can say it. We can say it. <laughs> yes, yes, it was supported by the USA. The United uh, States was country. in favor of that because there was a strong fight or the americans believed that communism was spreading around the world like a virus and they decided that it doesn't matter how we do it any tactic is as acceptable um uh any means is okay as long as we stop the spread of evil communism and they were so scared of what happened in cuba because Cuba became a communist country, that, that more countries would start to become communists. So they thought, all right, we're going we're gonna to do whatever we have to do, including putting in our own governments, doesn't matter how evil they are, or helping or supporting people as long as it's not a communist government. It's all good. Mm. Yeah. Yes, yes. And it is very strange in South America what to be le uh, left wing means very complicated because if you want to develop your industry as a country it is understood like a left uh, position leftist position so it, so you mean the left the so left strange. in argentina is like the center in a lot of other places yes uh, is it like we, sensitive we to be to say left left wing is sort of it's very strange because we have uh, this the government just just uh, so right people now. people watching i want to be clear people watching when we say right wing left wing usually what that means is right wing is considered politically conservative um mm. and uh usually right wing um uh the governments that are considered very right wing extreme right wing would be the nazis <laughs> would be the ex mm. the most extreme version of that but also for example in the united states the republican party is right wing so it's just a general conservative political side and the left wing would be more government uh, left wing usually favors uh, more social programs um, and is usually considered on the sort of socialist side or closer to socialism, closer to communism. And on the left, usually the government is larger, government programs larger. So, and then the center is kind of uh, eh, nothing. <laughs> yes. Corporate. Here, for example, C center is corporate. Yes, and here, if, if there is a candidate or, or like a president that wants to have a um, protect, protectionist economy and develop industry, it is considered a left, leftist because of that. Hmm. It's weird. So it's just, um, I think but there's a term for that. It's called, the, I think it's called the Overton window is how far 
the window of what is all of politics in, in your country shifts right or left. So mm -hmm. if you have a right-leaning Overton window, then the left is actually closer to the center of most places. And if it's mm -hmm. far left, then the right position is closer to the center. Yes. Well, okay, we, we can uh, change the subject. Okay, yeah. What, I, what did I ask about? No I... norms. <laughs> no, it's good. It's interesting. It's interesting to get, the, get a little background. Yes, so there's a big inflation a problem. About this. Yes, it started in the 70s with that dictatorship because that dictatorship imported uh, that um, model of neoliberalism, right? Mm -hmm. And here, what that uh, uh, meant was uh, to take debt and not to develop industry because those, those dictators uh, wanted to open the, 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 the economy and import the, the, industry, the manufactured uh, products, right? And uh, they, they took uh, a lot of debt. So since then, we never uh, could pay that, that debt uh, definitely. We are always trying to pay that debt and uh, with the FMI, uh, no, uh, that that is in Spanish. Let me search for it. The um, International Monetary uh, IMF, Fund, right? IMF, yeah. IMF, yes. Uh, we have uh, problems with with them. Well. But anyway, the, the problem is that always we had inflation since then. And we tried different solutions, but any of them worked, right? So what does that mean for the state of, I sort of, I, when I was describing it, I was kind of saying, because individuals take on more debt, that changes the way that people think about what kind of life they would like to have. The ideal life is different. Um, what is it? So what is it for young Argentinians in their 20s and 30s? Yes, for example, uh, here university is free. That's great. <laughs> That's great. But I think that is the, the we have the same problem in a different shape because you go to university that is free, but you it's it's it is impossible to buy a house for us because if you are um, only in the city say, or anywhere, um, almost anywhere in in a if you don't want to live in the middle of, of the a country, the countryside, right? I live in the middle of the countryside. It's great. You should try it. Yes, yes, but uh, yes, I I don't know how 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 it is to to plan that kind of of living here. I I, I never thought uh, seriously about that. So pe people, young people are not buying houses. It's very difficult. You 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 must uh, um, uh, uh, like he her hereditary hereditary. Uh, yeah, you need to you need to inherit. Uh, yes, you need inherit to inherit a house. Okay. Yes, because you you are saving money in pesos. Mm -hmm. It's our our uh, coin, right? Yep. Pesos. And um, with inflation, with the inflation we have. Next year, it it uh, is the the half. Right? right. So, so inflation is increasing so much that what you if you save a lot this year, that a lot next year is no longer a lot. Yes, and imagine you say, well, I will buy uh, dollars, U.S. dollars, but it is illegal. But you do it anyway. Yeah. You buy U.S. dollars and and you save it, but also us dollars has inflation so not that much are, though 
not that much, but it also has. You don't want to to save your dollars in your house and uh, and don't put it in in a, a like um, conservative investment. Right. You you want to to maintain that that uh, how do you say? Uh, the, you want power you of, want your interest rate to equal or surpass the inflation rate. Right. So yes, you want at, like if inflation is eight percent per year, you want your uh you want your conservative investment to be nine percent per year or something. Exactly. And and to equal inflation is easy for you. Relatively, yeah. Yeah. Uh, re relatively, yeah. But but we, we don't don't we we can't you need to be an expert in, in finance. Uh, you have to be trading to... all day with thirty-five computer screens just to, just to reach it. <laughs> no, but, but what about really Bitcoin? Can you user... can you? What about cryptocurrencies? Well, it, it is it's very risky. It is very risky. That's if true. You don't yeah. want to take a risk. You don't have an op option in order to maintain the the that, that money you earned, you saved. So so. Um... As a result, I don't, I don't, I don't want to take risk. So, as a result, most people just rent. Yes, and it is uh, very, uh, very expensive, also, to rent in very, very, everywhere. Very expensive. Yes, yes, it is. Is oh wow, most, interesting. Mostly, mostly in in the bigger cities, of course. Of course, yeah. Yeah. Well, so what does that mean for for a young a youngster um then? Does that mean like I said family delaying family and uh you know um looking for side hustles and uh, changing jobs every 2 years is an, is the norm now. Mm -hmm. Um is that the same as well for well it, um I think there is something happening here that is very strange that, for example, uh, people around me, people of my age, I think it is similar similar to you. They are interested about like bitcoins or <laughs> in, investing uh, money. And that's why that uh, would be very strange to our parents. Right. Right. So, just, just to sort of get ahead, right? To get out of the inflation yes. hole. Yeah. It was easier. You you need to work to save the money, buy the house, and feed your children. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's interesting. I think um, w one thing that'll be good and i put good in quotes is there i don't know i don't know about art in argentina but in uh we have a large generation they're called baby boomers they were born after world war ii is a huge generation and they are the ones who had all those opportunities to easily get ahead buying homes at age 24 you know so now they're all I mean, not all, but many of them had the opportunity to be very wealthy and they are holding on to a lot of that wealth. And it didn't go down to the younger, the generations under. A lot of it is being held by these old people. So the boomers are going to die. <laughs> when they do, some of that capital is going to go down to other generations. So I think not to celebrate death or anything, but... For economic <laughs> reasons, it could be a positive thing. Hmm. Maybe. I don't know. Yes. We'll see. I don't know. Uh, well, I wanted, I wanted to go over one more aspect of sort of cultural differences or similarities, maybe. Um, when it comes to friendships here in the United States, well, I think I'm very abnormal, right? Um, uh, I will maybe see friends maybe once a month, maybe at the most. Um, but 
And it's changed a lot because of COVID. People are, I think, seeing each other less generally. But um, I think here there's a there are sort of two classes. There's people you know or acquaintances. And for people you know and acquaintances, a lot of people try to get as many of those as possible in order to you know, know people. There might be opportunity, work, business opportunities. There might be networking. It's it's networking, um, and that's similar in in China. Actually, that's called um, your guanxi is your sort of opportunities via your network in a way. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, there's a sense that those are kind of artificial friendships right um i think people have in america generally very few real friends close close friends mm -hmm. like two or maybe three um but it also depends on personality i think some people maybe extreme extroverts collect as many friends as possible but i my sense is that um, there's these two very clear groups. I've been in places around the world where this is not so clear, where where the idea of friend is everybody's a friend. And I think here there's this clear distinction between your circle of a few people and then people who I can, not necessarily people who I'm using, but people who I know who I know I'm never going to be close friends with them. It's just not going to happen, right? Um, or or it happens very rarely, right? So um, yes, that, I think my, that's my how it goes generally. My experience is that to make that kind of close friends is very difficult. Yeah. I I made that kind of, of, friends, of friendship, friends, uh, while when I was uh, at high school. And I have those friends till till now. Uh, Is that common? I don't know. <laughs> uh, no, not not that much. I think most of people makes the uh, at my age, people with my age, I had fifty have made. <laughs> have made the, the, their friends like in a uh, university mm -hmm. not in high school but it depends there there, there are also people that uh, have close friends that they met uh, in primary school yeah i hear that I too yeah. yeah i don't have any friends from primary school or high school or university zero <laughs> absolutely zero i don't stay in touch with anybody from any of those <laughs> we 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 have this this video about friendship <laughs> we, don't have we don't have any friends well that's we're doing this because we're trying to learn about it we're trying to figure out what it is <laughs> we don't have any so we try to help <laughs> yeah no um i feel uh I feel I, I don't I don't know how about clearly labeling things, but for me it has a lot to do with um, humor. For me, I, I find not many people understand my sense of humor or speak in a way that that I feel I can communicate on the humor level with. So I feel far away from a lot of people, and I'm kind of at a distance just watching. But when I meet somebody who under, who can who understands my sense of humor and has a similar sense of humor, I, I, I that is one of my main criteria for for friendship. Yes, but but I have an idea about that. It's like the humor can be developed in a in a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, it ha happened with my uh, love love relationships mm -hmm. romantic relationships 
that I thought we had had not a, a strong uh, compatibility in the humor sense of humor, but since we started to to share uh, experiences, uh, we started to develop a common sense of humor. You know, I do. Yeah, I noticed that, um, especially my wife has become way more sarcastic since we were together because um a sarcasm in my experience at least i could be wrong but in my experience of living in china sarcasm is not big it's not a it's not a it's not too big there's a type of it but it's different than my concept of sarcasm um mm. but my wife is now extremely sarcastic and i think it's my in, <laughs> my influence on her has been so i'm quite proud of that so i know what you mean yeah yes uh, and uh, well i think that is what happened with my high school friends we shared a lot of experiences we we did uh, travel together yes uh, and there we we made a lot of uh, jokes that we are still making nowadays so it's like, like you build up a course. you build up a little culture within a group of people and that is yes. that's a yeah that's a, a special thing yeah i agree yes, so so i don't i i don't think uh, necessary really necessarily you need to to start uh, that um, uh, link uh, with the same sense of humor but you can develop it together yeah, I think I think that that makes sense. There's but there's got to be some kind of initial thing there. I think that's important. That's important. At least for me, it's very important. There has to be some kind of initial. I, uh, I feel another understanding. thing about that. Like like I, I I'm not uh, that uh, hippie to use uh, this expression, but like an energy. Ah, you, you an aura, feel. an energy. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I need to be comfortable with the other person's uh, aura. I think that is more important to me the, than the, the humor. Well, yeah, maybe it's tied together. Maybe those things are similar. Yes. I, I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. There, there has to be this sort of comfort level. Um, there's a... The chance of this, uh, I won't say it. I was gonna, I was gonna share an experience about this, but then I was worried that that person might somehow watch this and see it. That would be very, it's very unlikely. But I'm gonna pass. I'm gonna pass. <clears throat> but I, okay, okay. it was to support what you're saying. Is there something about it? If the, the way I call it wavelength, you can call it aura or energy. There's like a, I think places have it and people have it. So for example, when I'm in on the West coast of the United States, I thought about living out there, California. It's just like the wavelength and me, my wavelength and that wavelength, we, it's like they cancel out. And it's, I feel weird there. I'm not comfortable. I lived in Seattle for 10 months. It was hell. I used to, and there was nothing wrong with my life there. It was great. But I used to, it, it was so, the, the, just the wavelength was just off. I used to look up at airplanes in the sky and think, I wish I was in that airplane. <laughs> like praying to airplanes. It was bad. But whenever I'm on the East Coast, I feel a lot more comfortable. Um, and also, I feel very comfortable <coughs> in um, China. Very comfortable in China. Wow. Most actually, most Asian countries, I feel really, really, really comfortable um, and happy. But just like the wavelength, it's it's. I feel like in my last life, I was definitely. I I lived in Asia somewhere. I don't know where. Not that all Asian countries years, are the same, but there's something. How many years did you live in China? Uh, I lived in China for four years, but totally, I've lived in China for five. 
because there was a period where I was going back and forth for business every few months and staying for a month at a time. So, and and, and how is your Chinese speaking? Oh, it's、level? perfect. I'm totally fluent in Chinese. Really? No, <laughs> no,、uh, no. It um. Do you I mean, think your your Chinese is like my English? No, I think your English is probably better is is better than my Chinese. Wow, yeah. But but you you could live there with no problem. Um, yeah. I mean, I can get along. Um, and also, I mean, I, I'm I can handle a lot of daily daily stuff, especially because、hmm. a lot of daily communication with my wife is in Chinese during the day. Just the simple, just simple things, and so I have a lot of practice with the, the ordinary stuff. But who starts that、uh, that move? Just happened naturally, just a natural thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah.、Um, I don't know. I don't know. Just it just natural. Her English is 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 better than my Chinese though. So a lot of the time we、mm -hmm. speak English too. Her English is、mm -hmm. quite good, but when we when we first、They、met,、say. her English was not good at all, and she. Just kind of learned it over time, and、uh, now it's really good. They say to have be bilingual、uh, child, you need、uh, each of you to speak always in your native language. Absolutely, children have、um, this a crazy language learning abilities, like crazy, and so if you had even. Let's say you had a situation where you had a housekeeper who speaks one language, you have a parent who speaks one language, another language, and then another parent speaks another. So you had three going at the same time.、Um, that would be fine. That the baby would pick it all up and be fluent in all three, and can they know which one is which? Because the basic, the base of the language is made of phonemes. The little sounds in each language, and each the phonemes sort of say, "Okay, this is this language bubble, and this is this language bubble,"、uh, and it's an identifier. And so the baby's、wow. brain goes building this bucket, this bucket, and this bucket. That never gets mixed up. So by the time they're age five, if they've grown up with all three languages, they're going to be amazing at all three by age five. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's crazy. Yes, and the earlier the I, better. I, I, it's I, not like oh, I'm going to wait until age two to start teaching them. No, no, no. It's completely the opposite. Yes, I read about a story like like that, but I think it was that one one parent is spoke in one language, the other parent the other, and the kid where、uh, when he、uh, they lived in a country. With a different language,、so、right? The kid、Perfect. went to school, and yes, exactly. And they grew up trilingual, right? Yes, yes,、fully. it's amazing. Yeah, but another part of it, part of it is the brain, a、uh, brain plasticity. But another part of it is just that,、um, like, if you tried, there are certain languages that if you or I tried to learn them right now, because they're so complicated, maybe phonetically. There's like those sorts of sounds that you have to make, and the the clicks and the stuff. We couldn't, we could never learn it. If we tried now and spent the rest of our lives focused on it, we'd never become native. Impossible. English is a lot easier. S Spanish is a lot easier because they're spoken by so many people. They're simpler. They they're not so many hard edges, and so it's easier to to master them. But there are some languages that are so complicated and nuanced, especially very localized、uh, languages that have many specialized sounds that it's we just couldn't. It's not possible. Can't do it. I I, I read that um, um, Japanese people can't difference between ara and ala, ala and ara. Yeah, I think.、Um, Differentiate. Yeah. Yes. I. I think so. They might be able to learn to hear it, right? But there are a lot of sounds like yeah, a d a and a r a would be, I think. Yes. The same. But what about this? What about this sound? Ara, ara. Do you ara. have in English so that sound? That sound. That's the. That's the r sound in Japanese, right? 
Yes, but it is not ara. It is ara. Yeah, it's right. Yeah, there's no because there is no er sound in Japanese. The er doesn't exist. Okay. Yes, in Japanese they have the same ara. It's just ara. Exactly. Yes. Like my name Luke in, in Japanese is ru Ruku, <laughs> and so the L is the L is the same. <laughs> yes, the same with me. My name is Paburo. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Ruku and Pablo. But, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but in Chinese, <laughs> in Chinese uh, they have the L and not the R. Right? Uh, not the what? The L and not the... It's the, it's the opposite, I think, in Chinese. Because they they don't use ara, but they use ala. Well, it's it's a little different because Chinese does have both the R and the L sound. They do in Chinese. But, but these R, these R, I, I, I say, ara, 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 that way. Yes, that's Chinese. right. That one would be, that one would be, that one would be reversed. But there is an R sound. There's a simple R sound. How does like, it sound? Like ren, that, that, that word is R. That starts with R. It's the same thing. And the pinyin spelling is R-E-N. And that pronoun Say the pronunciation is er, ren. Er, yes, yes, yes. It's the same. Yes, it's the basic R sound. Impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, but in Spanish and we la, don't have that sound. They have la, they have they have L. They have a... Yes. But when Chinese people come here and are speaking in Spanish. Every ara, 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 ara is replaced by ala, 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 ala. Oh, yeah, and yeah. Japanese people, that's the opposite. I, uh, one in time, fact, and it's also there are different dialects. So, for example, in the south of China, in the north, it's, it's totally different because in the south, a lot of spe people speak um, uh, Cantonese. And that especially mix, uh, uh, flips the... Uh, the L, R, and the N sounds get get kind of mixed up. I don't know that much about Cantonese, but I came across a dialect once. I was talking with someone, and his pronunciation of library was was zibozezi. That's how he said it, and that that blew my mind. But I'm not I'm not sure if that's Cantonese or not. Um. Right. Well, I, I want to, uh, since we're talking about this stuff, I actually have a video I'd like to watch uh, with you since we're on the topic of friendship. And th it is from Japan, actually. Have you, have you ever heard of, um, have you ever heard of Hikiki Mori? No, no, I didn't. All right. So I'm, we're going to watch this. It's three minutes, 16 seconds. And then I, I'm very keen to have your thoughts on it. This is, it happens particularly among men. And uh, it is where they essentially don't leave their rooms. They lock themselves in. I think the English term for it is a shut in. Uh, they don't leave their rooms. Um, so we're going to, we're going to watch that. Let me know if you can't hear it. Can you hear it? For nearly three years, Yuto Onishi's world was... Are you able to hear? Yes. ...his bedroom. <laughs> he slept during the day and lived at night. Trawling the internet and reading manga or comics. Yuto refused all contact with friends and family. Sneaking out only in the dead of night to eat. The Japanese call the condition hikikomori. Once you experience the hikikomori lifestyle, you lose reality. I knew it was abnormal, but I didn't want to change. It felt safe here. In junior high, Yuto had failed as a class leader, and to cope with the shame and judgment from others, he withdrew into his room. For Yuto, and as many as a million Japanese, the pressure from families and society is too much to bear. 
In Western societies, if one stays indoors, they're told to go outside. In Japan, they're not. Our play has changed. It's all on screens and not real-life situations anymore. There's cultural reasons also, a strong sense of embarrassment and an emotional dependence on the mother. This group of hikikomori have just come out of their rooms. They're in therapy to rebuild communication and trust. Some have been in their rooms for... <laughs> the look that that guy gives... Uh... Some have been in their rooms for a decade, so just to talk is a major achievement. And there are small victories here. This woman bought her first t-shirt. And trust. Some have been in their rooms for a decade, so just to talk is a major achievement. And there are small victories here. This woman bought her first t-shirt. But the prognosis is not good for most. The longer they've been in their rooms, the less likely it is they'll get back into society. Yuto Onishi has been out of his room for six months. Early intervention worked for him. Facing your trauma is horrifying. It's hard to do. If you can do it with somebody else, it can be fun. And then you can surely see a vision for the future. And coming to this school that specializes in teaching hikikomori kids has kept him on the outside. Once you become hikikomori, you can't see a future. So the first step is to show them a future they can be satisfied with and accept. Yuto is on the road back. But the pressing reality for Japan is that most hikikomori remain in their rooms. So I, uh, I think that's a pretty good, wow. um, pretty good summary of it. I don't know if it's the same as we have a phenomenon here called um, agoraphobia, or just a fear of going outdoors. I know in that case, it's much more common among middle-aged women. So, and this, I don't know if you caught it, but the trigger was that he was a class leader and he failed, and the shame of the failure made him just decide to not participate in the outside world. So it's obviously very, very sad. But mm -hmm. I think some people would yeah, say, oh, this is a, a first world problem. I, I mean, uh, but I feel like the first world problems are just as real in the mind. They're, they're very real mental, mental issues. Um, so do you have any initial mm -hmm. thoughts on it? Yes, I, I thought that we are um, here we, we have a, a lot of uh, psychoanalysis in influence, like Freudian, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and um, culturally, uh, um, it is very common to, to talk about uh, Oedipus. Oedipus. Oedipus, yeah. Sy syndrome. Sy Oedipal syndrome. complex syndrome. is, is mm -hmm. yeah, about the relationship with your mother. Mm -hmm. So uh, that kind of, of 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 living would be associated to that here. Okay. So <laughs> Freudian Freudian analysis is taken pretty seriously. I don't know, but it is very present uh, in in the imaginary of people. Okay. Okay. I don't know. It seems like it's kind of faded here in the last, mm -hmm. I don't know, 30, 40 years. I think a lot of it has kind of been, a lot of it is kind of dismissed. So it would be not common to, to think in this case about uh, Oedipo complex. I don't think people, I don't know if people would go immediately to some, an Oedipal complex. Cause I think at least my sense is that the Oedipal, the most of the Freudian stuff is a little oversimplified because of its its sexual emphasis. Um, it's kind of like he he only had one way of looking at the world, um, uh, and eventually he developed the death instinct, but that was still just an extension 
of his sexual focus. So I feel like his a lot of his ideas are kind of like, okay, that's a good observation, but your uh, your interpretation is a little oversimplified. Yes. You know, I had um, uh, <clears throat> a, a friend, a, a, a pal in primary school, and I went to his home to drink uh, tea mm-hmm. and play uh, Sega. Sega. What, uh, what kind of tea was it? A tea with milk that is not very common here. Black, black tea with milk. Like a British, like a British tea? Yes, it, it is not common here, but he's like his um, <clears throat> uh, grandmother used to 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 serve uh, that to us. That's uh, cool. I like that. Yes, like like an English habit. And uh, uh, that woman, the grandmother, um, was like very. Um, uh, she permitted that he was like a kikomori how, how is the word uh hikikimori english i think would be shut in he he Hik- was like an hikikimori <laughs> that boy and his grandmother uh, were allow- allowing that so she but didn't his mind mother- his grandma well i can imagine no. a grandma would love it basically hey uh no loneliness uh yes. i have a you know a companion he, companionship his ma- his mother wa- were always at work and that boy lived with his mother and grandmother was there some sort of traumatic event that triggered it or was it a gradual thing i i don't know but the parent weren't uh, there i don't know since when i don't know if he were dead but he weren't there and uh, that boy living with his grandmother and playing Sega and drinking <laughs> tea. Did he have a uh, job? Did he have a job? How did he support himself financially? Uh, in primary, I'm talking about primary. Oh, you used to drink British tea in primary school. <laughs> yes. Okay. Like one of the last. I thought this was last, a friend uh, from primary school that this. You recently no. had tea no. with. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. This, this happened at that time. But um, that that guy in the video said that in Western culture, they were saying, you need to go out. Here, it was true. When I was a kid, they said, you need to go out and yeah. ride your bicycle or to play football. <laughs> uh, but you need to go out. And it was strange to know that that boy. Uh, for me and my father I I remember that my father said no 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 that kid uh, needs to go out well it I don't I wonder if it's different for kids and adults right I do you think he's still like that probably not right I don't know but the, the, do you know that 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 people in in that uh, Chinese tatami uh, Japanese tatami uh, those those guys in the video, the the look and, and like the the glimpse, they, their eyes they look like they're kind of in a dream in a dream world in a way. Yes, that that was very similar with this. Interesting. Boy. Well, I the reason I wanted to bring this up is I think I think it's very interesting how we interact with each other. I mean, you and I are having this conversation many thousands of miles apart from each other. Um, and we live more on the internet. A lot of everything I do is on the internet. I might go weeks without seeing a person I know in person, right? Um, weeks. And it, then I don't even think about it. It's totally normal for me. But also I know that you know, human beings, our brains are programmed to be social and to interact mm. in person, right? Mm. So I wonder, do you think that uh, this is, we're just in a transition from an old way of doing things to where eventually we'll just do everything on the internet and, uh, you know, have our brains connected to 
to the internet and and just sit in pods all day? Are we moving in that direction, or is there is there something wrong with the internet that it doesn't provide something that we need because we evolved to be around each other? You know, uh, I think we have, have that these kind of fi fi physiologic uh, limitations, like biologic limitations. Mm -hmm. So if 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 our minds are set 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 yes to socialize i we and we don't do that and thus <clears throat> uh, you, you we mean we have a depressed. physical need to socialize a physical need to socialize yes it's like fish it's physical yes because it happens like in neuro tra tra transmission I, I don't know anything about that <laughs> neuroscience, but I, I think there there are like chemicals, and when you socialize, then uh, endorphin and I, I I don't know oxytocin, and and you feel better. And in if you if we need that in order to not to be depressed, we will be doing it. Well, what is this right? then? We're we're talking. We're now, socializing. Uh, is it yes. like a? Is this like a? Is this like the? Uh, do you like do you like Diet Coke? No, I don't like. So actually, if I'm gonna choose a Coke or a Diet Coke, I almost always choose the Diet Coke, because it's true that it doesn't taste quite as good, but it does trick my brain. And I don't crave anything sweet after that. And I didn't consume any sugar. So that's, I, I consider that a win, right? So uh, is, is sort of a, an interaction like this, because we're not in person, is this like the Diet Coke version of socializing? Yes, I, I have thought about that uh, a lot because... Uh, yes, it, it, it is not the same. I don't know why, but it is not the same. It can be very, very close. It what if we were, What if we take it to the next level? Uh, Mark Zuckerberg would say, okay, yes, that's because we're, the interface is a screen. What if it were more immersive? What if it, what if it were goggles and, and headphones and VR glasses and it were totally immersive? Would that be how in other words can you get there virtually or will you always think, just be getting close i think uh, like pornography is the best uh, a topic to think this because if you uh, live an experience in in pornography that is so real uh, that way you are saying um, yes of course with friendship it will be easy <clears throat> because you need to smell the other person, perhaps you need to touch the hand when when you are. Uh, uh, oh, where is my hand? <laughs> it, it's the opposite uh, direction. <laughs> when you are shaking hands, you need to to feel the other hand. Uh, I think we need that physiologically, biologically. I, th I think I think I agree to an extent, although <clears throat> I think we only need it because that's the way we evolved. But I think eventually we could evolve away from it as well. Yes, yes, yes. I also think that. But since we don't uh, evolve that way, we will need it for because, for now. Yeah, for now. Yes, because they they say we if you if you are isolated, uh, you you will be depressed. Uh, probably, probably, yeah. of course. Uh, I, I'm generally quite. I'm I'm physically very isolated, um, and I've always been physically very isolated. I mean, I do meet people, <clears throat> and I do have social in engagements, but usually when I when I go to a dinner party or something, at the end of it, I don't feel like. A, a rush of endorphins i think oh god thank god that's over that was exhausting can't wait to go home uh, and be alone again right uh, because i connect socially with a lot of people a lot of people 
but it's mm -hmm. all it's all through chat video um so i'm in communication with a lot of people and for me personally it doesn't do that much for me to mm -hmm. be with someone in person in fact i think quite possibly i prefer the virtual version <laughs> i i think i think i might be the first uh well in the next stage of evolution between our our cultures there is a difference and i i mentioned a uh, physical contact we uh, friends here we we make a lot of physical contact oh yeah we always uh, greet with with a hug, hug always mm. with friends and even with a uh, work uh, uh, pals, colleagues work, uh, Co colleagues. Work colleagues yes yes hello how are you do you do Hi. the kiss do you do the double kiss no only one but it's it is not a kiss it's like a, a cheek contact because okay. you keep yeah. kiss in the air or male female or or men too it's the same so but men will we, do the we, men will do the cheek kiss too yes yes of course yes but um with covid it is like different many people now uh, are fist making this yeah yes that's nice i yes. like the i like i like the fist bump a lot i think it's great yes but a lot of people say they they miss the the kiss and the hug so it likes uh, like this did did ah this is like a habit like a ritual that is important here you perhaps you you don't have it but shaking hands it is shaking hands yeah shaking hands is is there and uh i think hugs have changed a lot uh the hugging thing is now more for i think close friends and the hugging for people you don't know well is going away i think uh the that has less to do with covid and more to do with um <clears throat> especially in the workplace has more to do with the me too movement sort of uh physical distance wow. separating sort of thing um hugging is less generally i think less common in the workplace because of the, the black, idea of it's another gender i i watch it black people like uh making like a, a hit with the with the oh yeah shoulder. is it yep, common i think that's that's com i i I've, I've seen quite a lot of that yeah i <laughs> i can take it or leave it i mean i'm happy to to give if somebody wants a hug i'm that's fine i can do it but i don't i never feel that i need that if it's up to me, I'll just I'll just wave hello and goodbye. That's what I tend to do. Hi, bye, like that, and that's that's and fine with me. with with close friends. Yeah. The same. Yeah. <laughs> yes, but that is uh, I think that is a difference. Uh, uh, you specifically, uh, but also culturally. Maybe there's, I mean, some people are very touchy though. Some Americans are really, really touchy. Some people love that physical contact. Um, when they're, you know, joking around, they'll put their hand on your shoulder and shake you and, and touch your arm and stuff. And it's, there's nothing to them weird about it. They, that's just how they like to interact. What, what and, is their, their, their ethnicity? It's more Italian, Latin or no, no not not related to that i don't think there's a, i i don't think that's necessarily related i think i know i know a lot uh quite a few people who are more more like that and i can i'm fine with it again i'm fine with it but if it's up to me i will go fist bump or handshake or nothing and that's fine and and i don't need the i'm not a very i'm not a very touchy person in general i don't need it mm -hmm. because i it just seems like I, I I just don't get it. I don't understand. I just don't get the. I understand it intellectually. I understand, but I don't get it as when I interact with people. That is great because you are more prepared to be a cyborg than. Yeah, than I me. think I'll be first in line, and I think, yeah, I might be an early adopter. Uh, 
and and um what about being a kikimori no because i i have no f i i mean i love to go out i love to be around people i like i like um to be in a crowd i like to interact um uh you know so i i don't have a fear of it but it's it's just that i don't feel that i need it right so when it happens when i'm around it it's fine but i just don't i'm never the initiator of that because i i never feel that i need it i think i do have a chip a chip missing in my brain a social chip that has always kind of been missing for me and it might have something to do with growing up homeschooled and just mostly growing up around older people um i just i can interact and i like to have conversations but i never think geez i'd love to i'd love to be around people <laughs> how is that of homeschooled uh homeschool was was good it was overall a great experience i think socially it did have some negative but Please, please explain me what is that about. I don't know. Um, so in the United States, if you want to, if your parents want to homeschool you, they can. You still have to satisfy state requirements for education. So you have to pass certain examinations. But my parents decided to homeschool all three of their children and it can go well or not so well. So sometimes that means, you know, kids not being very well educated and just kind of doing whatever they want. But for very attentive, responsible parents, I think it can be really great because then you can progress at your your rate and pursue your interests. So I think I was able to get pretty far ahead uh, by the time I went to public school, which was I went to high school, public high school. So up until... Um, eighth or ninth grade, I was homeschooled. And then I went to a regular high school. But when I got there, I was way ahead of everyone else um, academically. So you made, you made you made like two years of primary school, only the last two two years, and then high school. High, no, high school is four years. So for the first, uh, everything up until the last four years, primary school, middle school. Ah, okay. Junior high so, school. So, uh, at at what age do, did you start to go to school? Um, I think fourteen. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Maybe fourteen. Wow. Yeah. So it had what a negative did, effect. A neg. It was what good. The good thing about to, it. To... <laughs> best thing about I, it was to... <laughs> self discipline was okay, was a very very good benefit of. Uh, learning mm -hmm. not just because I have to do homework or something, but learning, associating learning with interest. I'm, uh, I can pursue interests. I do have to learn certain things, but I can do it in my way. Uh, uh, finding a, a unique solution to something. So instead of having to do it the way that I'm taught, finding a way that's unique to me to solve a problem, I find those things constantly repeating in my adult life of I don't have to take a, a set way of doing it. I might find another solution. And that has helped me a lot in my adult in my adult life professionally as well. Um, and and uh, I think self-discipline is a big one, too, because you can get away with so much at home if you wanted to not be to not study or not try hard. You could <laughs> you could get away with a lot. So self-discipline mm -hmm. is big. There are regulations, you have to pass certain exams, but there is a lot of flexibility. But um, my my parents were very attentive with homeschooling, so I think they did, a, they did a really good job with it. I wish I had kept going. I wish I would not have gone to a public high school. That was the worst mistake I, I made. I got nothing from that experience. <laughs> And you, but you learned uh, how to interact with other kids. No, no. School. no? <laughs> I developed, I think I developed a, like a, I developed a dislike for my generation, an overall mm. dislike in high school. Just like, I don't get these people. I don't understand these people. 
and a much more comfort with older people. So I, because I grew up around a lot of adults and older people. And so in high school, I just always felt like, what are they, why are they doing these things? What is this? I, I, I never felt, I, I thought I wanted to be, I want to be a normal kid. I, this is what I thought. But when I actually got there, I realized, I realized that I, well, I, I continued to want to be normal. And so when I was in high school, it did cause some issues. I had a bit of, a bit of depression just because I was constantly telling myself I wanted to be normal, but then I didn't, another part of me didn't want to be normal. And just forcing myself to want to be normal for four years made me realize that uh, it's just uh, the, the millennial generation, maybe just not my cup of tea. <laughs> I think it would have been very difficult to me to, to start to be in school, in, in high school and, and not in primary. Now I understand uh, why there are these kids that go to school <laughs> with a machine gun. I kids, everyone, <laughs> because they they started uh, in in high school to to be with is the is is the worst uh, moment to be no, there. No, the people who are doing the school shootings are not homeschool kids. No, no. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> no, no. The and people doing the you... school shootings are disturbed young people. Nah, it was a show. I, I know it, yeah. it it must not have relation. Um, tell me when you when when uh, when when you was a kid, what what your parents did? Uh, they they did work at home. How how it was? Uh, when I was a kid, yeah, everyone was everyone was at home all the time. My brothers were at home. My father worked at home, um, and my mother was a housewife. Ah, okay. Wow. Everyone was together all the time. My God. Yeah. Yeah. It was all in all. It was, a, it was a, I think it was a, a good experience. Um, wow. I do think though, I, something maybe went, went a little wrong socially though. Cause I still struggle with that where I just feel, I always feel kind of just disconnected socially. Like I can interact, but it, for me, when I interact with people, it's like a game. I don't feel like I'm in the situation. I feel like I'm just playing around. And then I, I, I never got that sort of sense of belonging, of being in a, a group. I, I just never got it. It's a, it's a weird thing that I, I kind of regret, but also I think it helps with the perspective of things too. There's a, there's a pro and a con for sure. So you have two, two brothers. Yeah. Two. And this sense of humor you have that I think is is great. I think you should be a comedian. You shared uh, that sense of humor with your brothers. Uh, my older brother and I have a very close sort of locked in sense of humor that's very similar, I think. Uh, younger brother, not so much. A little bit less because mm -hmm. um, he grew up four years younger. So he... I mean, he's funny, but it's just a different. It's a different type of humor, I think. Yes. What about you? Yes. Um, I I think that kind of humor you you have is 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 like typical of of two uh, male brothers, but male male uh, brothers it is implied in the world. Uh, <clears throat> it is typical. Uh, it is great, but I, I I have a friend that has a similar sense of humor and he has the older brother that is very funny in the same way interesting that's share. interesting and i wonder and, if that's and I, I i remember to 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 watch a uh, ricky gervais saying mm -hmm. that with his brother he 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 shared that that sense of humor uh, that i think is is, is a similar type that's an interesting dynamic. My father's also also funny, um, hmm. so I wonder if there might that might be there too. What What about you? When you were growing up, um, school life and uh, that sort of stuff, and your development primary, of your personality. Prim mm -hmm. Primary school, I don't have a, a great uh, memories about that. It was okay, 
like flat. But uh, high school was great because I went to this uh, public uh, high school that um, you, if you went there, you need to study music a lot, like study music seriously. Was it a music high school? Yes. Yes, it was. Uh, yes. Uh, I, I don't know how to say it in English, but when you finish that high school, you are able to teach in primary school uh, music. Okay, so it you is have... a specific high school for music. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, it is. But it is complex because you had two, like two institutions in one, the musical one and the common. Was it a musical it... program in a regular high school? A music program, exactly, like, a, like but, a major in the high school. Yes, I think it could be like that. But if you want, if you wanted to go to the common high school, you need to do the musical program. Okay. <laughs> so it's like but a, it's like a regular you, high school wanted, with a specific focus. Yes, but if you wanted to, to make only the musical program and the common high school in another place, you also you also can. You also could. That's a that's could very be. unique. I've never heard of that before. But, but now yes, you teach you're teaching unique. music, but do you teach at any schools that have that sort of program where it's music only? Or because I know you teach at only, different schools. There is only this school wow. with that program. And I'm teaching there now. So you're teaching at the school that you attended. Yes. Uh, is that an yes, interesting experience? Do you do you teach oh, yes. with any of your teachers? Yes, I'm co colleague with my my ex teacher. Oh, okay, that's cool. Yes, yes, yes. It was it was like a dream for me. And when when I get the job, it was my birthday. Uh, oh really? Like, wait, uh, wait, do you, but you yes, teach like, at different schools, right? Not only that one. Yes, two. Oh okay. Mm -hmm. And for some reason, in my mind, visually, I picture you like riding your bicycle to twenty-five different schools. No, I, I told you that <laughs> that is very common here, but it's not my case. I I only uh, go to two different. Well, that means you get to build up relationships with colleagues and students, right? Again, please. You can build up. That allows you to build relationships with the students and and your colleagues. Uh, yes. Right. I mean, if you were going around to a bunch of different schools, it would be difficult to actually build relationships to get to know colleagues uh, and students, right? But if you if it's only two, yes. you, that means you're sort of a you have a like a foundation right mm, uh, yes with with students uh, the most important factor is how how many years will you have that group yeah for, for that for that students because you can go to a lot of different institutions and in each of them you have those students for a long uh, couple of years but uh, you you can be in only one institution uh, and, and only one year you have a group and, and next year another group and right interesting uh and is it only for subjects like music where you have that style of moving from one to the next what about a core subject like math would that math teacher go around to different schools or would they only teach in one school it depends. Uh, it depends. In high school, it is common to to go like in math to different schools, but it is also common to 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 take a lot of um, show in one place and work only there. Yes, it, it varies a lot. That's interesting. It seems like the education, public education system, is a little more flexible than it is here. Yes, but that's not fine. That, that that's not good. They 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 call this this way of working uh, the uh, cab teacher. The what teacher? Cab 
la taxi. taxi oh, teacher. cab teacher. <laughs> yes. That's interesting. Is that a is that a the positive value. word when they say it or negative? No, no, no. Because you finish in, in one one class and then you are a taxi going to the other school. <laughs> Can you make more money that way though? Not a lot of money. No, no. Teachers here don't don't earn a lot of money. Same here. Te public school teachers don't make a lot of money. <laughs> and what about a? Um, Private school teachers, you know? More. That? Yeah, more. Yes. More. Yeah. Here, not. I mean, I don't know if it's crazy, but I think private school teachers can make a pretty good living. Although it's, it varies by state. Uh, I'm from Ohio, and I think the salary for teachers is pretty low. In New York State, it's much higher, I think. Here, uh, I, I know because I work in a private school that people think that private school teachers and uh, much more, but it is not true. Mm. But you could yes. steal pencils from the school and then sell them on eBay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> In public school, I, I, I couldn't because uh, uh, there are no pencils. There are no, no materials. Oh, that's a shame. Yeah. Um, have you ever heard of the subreddit called outside the the what uh, do you know you know reddit yes and you uh, subreddit. Sub, uh, subreddit subreddit okay, like okay. one community in reddit yes do you outside? have you have you heard of the one called out, outside no i don't know anything about uh, reddit communities well you should you should check them out cuz there are some good ones I, the, the only community I know is the incel community. Are you an incel? <laughs> no. Does the in, do the incels have a Reddit, or their own Reddit? I thought it, the, that, that was the initial, initial um, movement. I Doesn't thought they were on 4chan, which is another website. But maybe ah, that okay. was on Reddit. Okay, Reddit is Reddit is the front page of the internet, and 4chan is the the tunnels beneath the city of the internet. <laughs> kind of darker. Well, anyway, Reddit outside. I I just wanted to share this because um, I think it's interesting. So this uh, this Reddit is the free to play MMO. MMO, Massive Multiplayer Online. Um, mm -hmm. It's got 7 billion active players. And this Reddit just basically helps people who are playing this game. Um, uh, over 7 billion players. I think almost 8 billion now. And people just post things and get, get sort of get advice uh, in the game. So I thought we could maybe go through a few of these. Uh, now this one I I like this one. I can't get out of hardcore mode. <laughs> can can you can you share a gameplay uh, demonstration video? As we go, I think you'll you'll get the I think you'll get the idea. Uh, let's just keep going here. I think you'll get the picture. Um, permanent permanent region transfers are extremely costly in terms of game currency. Not to mention it resets a lot of stats like friends and regional knowledge. Sometimes you start at zero language. Like real world. <laughs> it is the real world. That's what this is. This is talking about life uh, as though it were a video game. So the entire subreddit Reddit is based on that. All the posts look like people are asking about a video game, but it's just about life. Uh. <laughs> That's the entire thing. Uh, level 17 character. So, so how, do you know, how do you know? How do you know at what level are you? Well, that's your age. Your level is your age. So uh. <laughs> my level 17. Yeah. So this is this is an interesting one. Um, my level 17 character recently switched maps from parents' home to dorm to pursue 
University main quest <laughs> and has been <laughs> having trouble with the cooking mini game. <laughs> so then people are so everything that you uh, everything that that happens is sort of talked about in terms of this game that that everyone is playing. Um, I like Very it because fun. it's a good way to give a kind of perspective on how we interact with life. Um, let's see. <laughs> My level 14 character has a horny debuff. Uh, let's see. I think I downloaded a virus. Merged clans last night with my longtime level 30 raid member on a local lake server. Spent most of the day harvesting harvesting limes to make uh, the green mana potions and cactus to uh, boost toxic toxicity damage. Uh, that is fiction. Huh? That is fiction. No, it's talking about something real in terms of games. But what is the real thing happening there? A uh, 30-year-old th um, is getting married. Merging clans uh, would be t would be would be getting married. I think. Uh, okay. The right after potion. Yeah. And then, and then, um, potions would be alcohol. Uh, cactus, uh, cactus and limes would be, um, I think that would be tequila, maybe or or a margarita, possibly. <laughs> and put plus ten into dancing, but it gave me minus three in my speech. So uh, <laughs> everything was fine, but then my screen went black, so that they drank so much they passed out. Uh, right after the bar cutscene, I thought the power went out, but that wasn't the problem. And now every time I reboot, uh, I reboot, it's really laggy. My character seems to have taken a lot of damage. So this is a hangover after getting really drunk after a wedding. <laughs> I think I downloaded a virus. The, the title, what, what could be in real life? Which one? The virus one? I think that I downloaded. Was... Oh, um, I think um, I don't know what I don't know why that title uh, virus would be. I think that's just the hangover. I think that's probably just the hangover. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the levels in this game are rigged. When you reach level 40 or higher, most of the characters are starting to get weaker and weaker. Can anyone explain? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember my best guy. Um, let's see here. The heroine is all fentanyl and is killing all the players in hardcore mode. Please help. <laughs> fentanyl. What fentanyl is, that? is uh, that additive in um uh it's heroin or a variation of it uh, and it's it's uh, causing a lot of people to overdose and die so it's about drug addiction um <laughs> which one the diabetes anyone have the diabetes one <laughs> debuff yeah I recently it's a, it's a very it's a it's a very complex game. It is a very it's so there's so many variables, it's really complicated. It, Mini it, map it is, not the, the forum the forum is, is neither needed for sure if you want to play this game. Exactly. You have to yeah, exactly. That's where you get help. Arhenes uh Barreto says, Hi Luke, where's your friend from? Pablo's from uh where are you from, Pablo? Which map? Um which map are you from? I, I, I don't know how to name in English my country, really. Can Ar you? Ar Ar Argentina. 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 
How do you okay. say it? Argentina. Argentina. Okay, so it's the same. It's just the the G is pronounced differently, which yes, I recently learned because Argentine Argentine is like the adjective, right? I originally pronounced this this viewer's name Argenis, and uh, that was quickly corrected. It's Argenis, I believe. A R G E N I S. What is that? That's his name. A viewer, a viewer ah. who's watching. Ah, okay. And um, where is he from? Um, I don't know. He has like like um, Italian surname. <clears throat> I don't know. Jens. Ah, Jens. Ah, Jens. Maybe, maybe, maybe he will let us know. He or she. He, I think. Is that a is that a man's name? I don't know. Our tell, us your, name. tell us it's your a, game stats. Great. What's your level? Gender level, gender, and map location. I think our Genis is from from the from the outside game because he has a very uh, high fine, high fantasy name. Good good name. Yeah. <laughs> maybe maybe trapped in a mini game, possibly. <laughs> Our gen is is, uh, is good for Game of Thrones. I recently bought the Scottish Highlands camping expansion. Expansion would be uh, like a pack you buy after you buy the game. Uh, the only issue is when my companion app uh, ran out of MP, my real time mini map became inaccessible. Um, Companion app would be his his phone. I'm only level 18, so I haven't unlocked the uh, the read map skill yet. So maybe they don't know how to read a real map. I have no idea where I am and not sure how to find the next objective or campsite. Using an emergency MP heal pack uh, the um, uh, so I can access the forums. Please help. <laughs> But what 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 um, was it uh, MP like mana points? Uh, it must be. It must be. I I think. Um, it yeah. I think so. I think so. Um, I like the the thing that I really like about this this subreddit in particular is the the NPC idea because I now <laughs> yeah. when I'm walking around in real life I see NPCs everywhere now. I, I look at someone just going back and forth doing some task and I think there's no way that that's a real person that that's a player that's got to be an NPC <laughs> yes you are you are one step only one step away from solid system uh, yes well I admit that in the game there are probably a lot of players but I think that there are a lot of NPCs too if you don't if you guys don't know the NPC is non-playable character. Do you think do you think that that's possible? Yes, of course. Arhenis is from Venezuela, is a man, and Arhenis means prosperity. I am prosperity. Argentina oh. means land of prosperity. So same root word apparently. Mm, that's not exactly true. I must yep. say. Because what does it mean? Arche what does it mean? Argentum is uh, silver in Latin. <clears throat> okay. Argentum. Ar Argentina is from uh, Argentum because we have a river here that is called R Rio de la Plata, River of the Silver or Silver Pla Silver River, and our name derives from that river. So it's like to say. Silverland. Silverland. That's cool. Yes. I like that. Um, yeah. Do you think it's possible that um, whatever whatever this is that where we're living is that it could be a, a simulation and and some people may may be NPCs. Yes, I am. I am open to to that possibility. I, I am not open to every possibility. I am not open to, for example, the possibility that we live in the world 
the Vikings thought the world was. I what don't do you think mean? that. Oh, I, that there, there is like Odin, Odin, Wood, Wooden, the the god. Yeah. And the, as, oh, as, Norse, as God, Norse gods. Oh, yeah, yeah. I I don't think that could be a possibility. Hold on a second. I need to open a jar. This is the moment of truth. I've just been handed a jar, and I have to open it. No pressure. Hey, that was easy. I think I just got a uh, strength. Uh, I just leveled up my strength stats. Uh, <laughs> plus it three. Kathy that, that, it was Kathy that needed to open the jar. No, 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 no. Kathy's standing over there waiting for instructions. <laughs> um, <clears throat> what was I saying? What was I saying? You said you were saying you're open to the idea that we're living in a simulation. And yes, because you're not because, open to all possibilities. No, no, not all possibilities. There are many that I think they 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 are possible. So I think it is possible. I don't like it to, to be possible, to be true. I don't you don't like want it, it to be true. true. But no, no. Uh, I don't want it. I, I don't want no simulation is not bad for me but what i don't like is to think that i am the only uh, mind in in that game that all the other people is npc i don't like that what about what about not all but but some what about like there no, are no. maybe there are maybe a hundred thousand players and everyone else is an npc mm, no i don't like that but, i like that a no. lot no, I, I find I don't it like very that attractive. If that is true, I need to know. I need to really know which is which. But how can you really know? If I can't really know, I must assume that everyone is a uh, has a mind. Well, I think that's a good assumption. It's, is to, to... it's like an ethical uh, position. Well, on the ethical position, I think that's good to assume that everyone has a mind, but it, it, good to assume because you want to be kind to others. That's generally a good policy. But um, when I'm playing a video game, I'm also generally kind to the NPCs. Um, so I just, I'm not sold on the fact that everyone is a player. Me, I, let, I, let me, I'm like 80% sure that there are a lot of NPCs. Hello, no, welcome. If, I, if you guys have questions, by the way, uh, feel free to ask. Um, I don't, I, people have just been watching up until now, but if you have questions for myself or Pablo, we're just uh, talking about stuff. Feel free. Archenis is saying that land of silver is is uh, it has both meanings. I didn't know. Thanks to to let me know that. <clears throat> What were you going to say? I'm reading the comments also. Okay. This is the first time I, I, I do that. Are you able to see the chat inside of Ecamm? No, no. I, I, I opened another uh, 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 tab. Another, okay. Another tab. <clears throat> uh, I was saying that. One. Ah, yes. I was saying that. I, I I can't remember if I already told you that, uh, but when I was like mm, sixteen years old or seventeen years old, with with the uh, other guys uh, of high school, we we went to play GTA the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. L like in a we called it a cyber, like the cyber. It was a place with a lot of computers, and you went there and you pay, you paid like two hours, and you play with the other people in the same room. I think that's called a, a game cafe. Yes, well, that and cyber bar. Played... I've heard cyber bar, which is weird, but yes, yes. Cyber. We 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 called it a uh, cyber. It should be called cyber because hey. that's the coolest word. Cyber is a great word. <laughs> Let's go to the cyber. 
and uh, I, 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 I did not uh, use to, to go to the cyber, but I went uh, that time and we played GTA and I, I were destroying, destroying everything and killing every NPC. Well, that's what and you do. That's I, the point of Grand Theft Auto, right? Yes. And when I went out, I, I, I was like with this uh, impulse of wanting to, to destroy every car and everything in, in real life. It was very, very, very intense. But, did, really. but you didn't do it, though. No, but I, I never felt that kind of feeling so strong wanting to destroy everything really eh? really strong that's interesting i don't think i've ever had that feeling of a game experience carrying over into the real the real world i mean some it was the the only the only uh, time it happened to me very strange mm. that's interesting usually when i'm playing games well maybe it's just the types of games that i play uh there is often killing involved, but it's so far away from my my life experience that it just doesn't mm. carry over. Like um, uh, my wife and I like to play games together. That's one of our things that we do. Uh, we play video games and, for example, Diablo, uh, where you're basically just, I mean, killing thousands of demons and monsters. But it's I envy you. It's so far away. That it just I when I'm done it's just okay done that was fun and I don't it doesn't carry <laughs> at all. No no no, uh, it is very it's very strange to 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 feel what I felt. Yeah. Interesting. I wonder how common very that unusual. is. Yeah. Yeah yeah. Well, maybe it is not unusual. Maybe that's maybe that's normal. Ah. Oh. Yeah. yeah, for me, it's very, very, very unusual. I it is the only one, but it was very strong, very terrifying. Um, I think it, 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 perhaps it, it had like a, a chemical uh, explanation. Maybe as games get more realistic, more people are playing VR. Then the line between real life and and virtual life will become blurry, because everything is from the the VR viewpoint, so it's close mm. to life. I wonder, maybe. Yes, I I, I feel something uh, similar, but more beautiful. When I watch some films, uh, especially animated uh, films, animated movies, but with a very strong aesthetic, yes. Then I I go out and see reality with that that kind of aesthetic. Yeah, yeah. I I I, I know is, that feeling. It, it's as great. Well. Like a Miyazaki movie, right? After you yeah. watch after you watch a Miyazaki movie, the the world does feel better. <laughs> exactly, and yeah. and I I also have. Uh, I think you you will understand that uh, with Chinese, you pick any animal of the world, you 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 pick a, a, a photo a picture, and you put a Chinese characters telling the name of that animal, and suddenly the animal looks like more Chinese. I no, I don't that I that no? I don't agree. No, 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 I don't agree with that at all. <laughs> I no. already told you that. No, you haven't told me that, but I I do not have that experience. When I think of uh, an animal and I think of the Chinese name of the animal, I don't get a sense that it, the animal becomes more Chinese at all. No, 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 no. It's not that. Imagine that you don't know what animal is this, like a fish. Okay. Do, you don't know the name in your language. But I know but, almost all animals. I I feel like uh, I don't come across a lot of yeah, animals that I don't know. But like like a subspecies. Okay. Okay. Yes, uh, and they say this is a Japanese fish or like, or like a no more Chinese. 
a Chinese fish. This is the name. It's in Chinese. And I don't know. <laughs> I feel that animal is, is like different. I okay, I think I know maybe that feeling a little bit, but not for Chinese. I think uh, like for example, when I think of the uh capybara, you know the 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 capybara? No. It's a I believe it's a South American rodent. Capybara. Capybara is uh here, let's see. Oh yes, carpincho. Very cute, by the way. I would love to have one as a pet because they're so cute. There is a story here. But when I see this, okay, so like my point was, I do have a sense that if this thing were going to talk to me, it would speak in Spanish. (laughs) Yeah, and they do drink mate, you know, they do. Yeah, they they drink mate mate and they speak Spanish. And uh, soon he said the queen's no, 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 no. But, but did you watch the video of, of this uh, this animal uh, drinking mate? No. Please, please search for it. Well, drinking water, milk, wine, beer. They drink a lot of things. <laughs> All right. Is it uh, is it this one? It is that one. I think yes. <laughs> One of those. That music is chamame. Very typical. They're so cute. They're so cute. They're very friendly, right? I think. Y le chupa, le chupa. No, ter. Y le chupa, le chupa. Tremenda. That's crazy. He wants more. Le gustó, le gustó el mate. He likes it. Amiga. Do you think it's hot? I don't know. No, ahora quiere mate, dale mate, Tiscornia. Dale mate. It's probably hot. No, un mate muy carpinchero, mira. Epa. ¿Qué pasó, amiga? Se quemó, se quemó. Se They are saying, eh, he, he has. Pobrecita. Uh, too hot, too hot. What? They are saying, uh, it is burnt. Oh, it's too, Because yeah. Because it was too hot. And yeah. the last one, the, the first one, I think it was in the in the in the mate and it was a little colder yeah it doesn't like the doesn't like the hot one i can understand that because you can you can drink it hot or room temperature right some people drink it hot some people like it no room temperature is no it's not common it's the same as black tea okay. you can drink it cold or well or, or very hot i like it hot i recently started drinking it a lot um, and I, I really like it hot. Um, it's great. What, what thing? Mate. With the, yes, are you, are you with drinking the same mate? cup. Exactly the same with the straw. Yeah, I have one. Wow, great. I drink um, it uh, where did almost you every day. Buy, where did you buy it? Uh, Amazon. Wow. And, and the, and the Sherba, the... How do you say uh, Sherba? Sherba the, uh, it, the... It's just a organic, um, organic one that I found on Amazon. It had high wow. reviews. People said the reviews said very good, very authentic. So I bought that one. It's good. And when when did you taste it for the first time? I I had it for the first time maybe a month ago. And did you 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 didn't like it? I've been drinking it very often during wow. the week, especially almost every day. Yeah. <laughs> You know, every every drink that has a uh, caffeine is 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 like uh, addictive, and you will like to to drink it every day. Well, it's the, it ha- it's <clears throat> here are some advantages. I love coffee. I drink coffee too, but it has a couple of unique advantages. That drink, um, so you with a with a with a with a cup of with a a tea bag. 
uh, the taste usually goes away after if you pour the hot water in the cup with the tea bag. Maybe you can get two cups, and then the flavor is just pretty much gone. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, the um, the tea is extremely strong. The flavor is it's very bitter and very strong. At least the one the I have. One. Yeah. So I can yeah. fill the cup up with a huge pot of hot water that I have on my desk mm-hmm. like six times and it still tastes really good. So the flavor lasts so I can drink a lot of a lot of water and the the caffeine it's not because... like it doesn't it doesn't hit too hard. It's a kind of gentle uh, mm. caffeination that kind of it's a little better than coffee in that way. Yes, yes, yes. For example, my mother <clears throat> she drinks mate in a breakfast, in a lunch, in a, how do you say, a, the five, five o'clock a tea. Tea is a British thing, but yeah, I know what it means. Yeah. How do you say that? The, we don't, we don't say it. Ah, you don't have, do you don't have. Americans that, do uh, not have tea time. No. Ah, uh, well. We have breakfast, or- brunch, lunch, dinner, and that's all we have. Everything else is a snack. Break, breakfast, brunch. Breakfast, brunch, lunch, dinner. Every day you eat brunch? No, 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 no. Brunch is like a ah, people will eat brunch location. instead of breakfast, maybe on a Saturday. Ah, ah, okay, okay, okay. My mother drinks mate in breakfast, lunch, uh, tea, and many times also in din- with dinner. Why not? That's great. Yeah. Love it. All right. Well, the last you have time a few more minutes. I wanted to do one more thing with you, if that's okay. Okay. Uh, this is the state dot gov American values quiz. <laughs> and I wanted to see how you do at this. Okay. I did one of these last week. I did the mango seller and the culture quiz for other cultures around the world. Uh, I didn't do very well. I got six out of 10. All right. Test your knowledge of American values. 10 questions. It is your first day at a new job and the president of your company company introduces himself as Joe. Which American value does this scenario reflect? Informality or directness? Oh, A. Okay, that's what I would go with as well. Nice. Americans (laughs) tend to be informal. People are less likely to people are less likely to use titles and often refer to people by their first names. Hmm. Nice. Aisha, I'm going to I'm going to actually I'm going to move you uh, over here so we have a little more. Eh, where can I do this? I guess I'll just make us smaller. Yes. For this one. Great. There we go. <laughs> Aisha comes from a family that owns a small restaurant in their town. Members of her family have run the restaurant for a few generations. All of her neighbors expect that she will begin running it when she gets out of school. But she has always wanted to be an actress. Her parents recognize her talent and help her pursue her goals wholeheartedly. Which American value does this scenario reflect? B. B. Individualism. Yeah. (laughs) Yes. Nothing to do with nationalism. Yeah, that's a weird choice. <laughs> <laughs> that's a weird choice. That's a little easy. Correct. American we need individualism. we need good actress in our country. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she's we, we support her becoming an actress for the country. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah. Well, some people may. I don't know. Maybe in North Korea, that's what they do. 
Uh, correct. American individualistic culture allows and encourages people to uh, create their own lifestyles as uh, uh, that they hope will lead to happiness and, accom and accomplishments. That's true. That's, that's true. It's true, but they could have come up with a scenario that made the choice a little more difficult, like individualism or um, duty or something like that. I, mean, I don't know, something mm -hmm. else. A student disagrees with her professor about a point he makes during a lecture. The student argues her point with him in front of the entire class. Instead of being irritated, the professor encourages her to speak her mind and even seems delighted by their debate. Which American value do th does this scenario reflect? Mm, it is do, you, more do you know the meaning of word A? Yes, yes, okay. yes, I know. But no, it is directness. Directness, okay. Well, you're, you're killing it. Directness, yeah. Um, by the way, any of these seem... Uh, how do you feel about any of these? Do any of these seem weird to you culturally? Like, no. Well, no. No, no, no. What about this scenario in Argentina? Would that be cool to disagree with a professor? Like in China, that's a no-go. <laughs> that's That can't happen. Because uh, Confucian values mean that teachers get a lot of reverence and respect so you would never uh you would never disagree with them publicly in a classroom setting you know i i have like like a anecdote anecdote anecdotic anecdote yeah i, I anecdote i were a like a, in high school i i had a physics teacher she were very ignorant she she were very bad and she said because she read in an email i think or a fax <laughs> she said that uh, we will uh, go into watch the sky uh, the next weekend and we will see mars with the same size of the moon and I I I I I, I like it uh, astronomy at that time and physics, and I watched her and I did this. That uh, it means what are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I I feel a little bit guilty about doing that. Uh, it was not good. Oh, you were a but... young punk, you know, a young kid. You, you, you got to rebel. That's fine. That's fine. But I think that that is uh, doing some kind of gesture, right? Like if you were to do a gesture to teacher, I don't think that's directness. I think that's maybe rude. But if you were to... So there's an important difference between what you did and this, what this student is doing. This student is saying, I disagree with you hmm. because and explaining it and there's a debate that so that's seen as great a very good thing he, but if you were to say well f you teacher or something like that then that would not be okay no it was but it was very difficult in that situation i i was to try to be direct and tell to all the students that she was saying an impossible thing right yeah yeah, that's that's a strange a strange thing to say. Everyone knows that Mars is only this big. <laughs> no, and I, I thought if if really Mars is going to look that way, we are going to die for sure. Yes, yeah, the gravity, <laughs> the gravity is going to basically uh, uh, cause major problems. Uh, the mm -hmm. uh, that would be that would be a disaster. Yes. All right. You arrive at an interview 20 minutes late due to a traffic jam. Nevertheless, uh, you're a strong candidate and have all the skills to meet the job requirements with many years of exper experience. But you are still very concerned you won't get the job due to your late arrival. Which American value does this scenario reflect? Hey, of course. Yes. Uh, this choice, this choice is weird, right? I mean, um, yes. this is Chris, not a good, uh, not good choices in general. No, no. The scenarios are good, though. 
I feel like the scenarios are good. It is like more like a propaganda uh, trying to tell you what are the values of Americans. But yeah, and also, but that... but I wouldn't say that effective use of time is a value. I would say mm -hmm. there's a difference between effective use and being on time or like punctual punctu punctuality <laughs> yeah. or something. That's different, right? <laughs> Very different. Who, who wrote this? Yeah, who wrote this? <laughs> what what should it mean uh, in in America? I don't know. I, I I think that this is an an Italian insult, right? I see it in Italian movies when people want to. I think it's like um, like a. Yes, but ooh. I think in think in Italy it's different even. Well, we don't. Ha I mean, Amer we only have it in America because of Italians in America. So, you you need to move it. <sighs> Am it's I like what? What are you saying? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That... But but more rudely than just what are you saying, right? Yes. Yeah. What what are you saying? What are you saying? Is that? And in in Argentina. Kill it, sis. Give it cease. Give it cease. Okay. So it's worse. <laughs> yeah. Okay. It's like you're, you're saying something uh, ridiculous. One I learned in the UK, that's a big insult that it no like in America we don't have is, is this one. Two fingers wow. up. Because you can do the middle finger, and that's one thing. But two fingers up is uh, insulting. Is that insulting in? No, you know that no, one. No. But it would be painful. I I originally heard that that was because um, uh, of archery. Uh, people would show someone who, uh, like in a in a in a battle, someone who had had their fingers chopped off wouldn't be able to pull a bow back or something. And so the French would do that to the British for some reason. I don't know the whole story. But then I, wow. I no, then heard again that that's also a myth. Uh, so I don't know where wow. it comes from. But it's still an insult. Okay. Yes, it's just, like it's the, the direction. Real. That's good uh, and that's not good. Good, bad, good, bad. The, the F word. Sorry, I, I, I said that word. But the history is like uh, something about the king. I don't know. Do you know that history? The history of the F word? No, that's a good topic for a video, though. I, maybe I should do that one. I don't know the history of it, actually. Like the K is for king? Something like that. I don't know. Hopefully these get better. Janet loves to shop and spends a lot of time in stores. Soon her house is too full to hold all of her purchases, so she rents a storage unit to store all of her belongings she's purchased and accumulated over the years. W whoa, whoa, wait a second. That, that <laughs> This is not an American value is to put all of your shit in a storage unit because you have too much stuff. That's not a value. That's just a byproduct of consumerism. It's like a, that's like, um, <laughs> But 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 uh, if if innovation is a uh, it it would be a, a if you think it is good for her to to maintain all the all those things it would be a good value to, to it's a it's an innovation what she is doing very unique. right but they want you to answer a right I mean that's what they want you to say but that's know. not still not that's not a va having all of that stuff is not consumerism consumerism is the purchasing stuff but and yeah people people do like to buy stuff i think but the having a bunch of crap that you can't keep in your house is not a important thing in america that's like a a negative thing people you would look people would look down on you for not being able to throw anything away i find this very weird i think it's be I think it's, <laughs> it's going to be wrong. I guarantee it. They want you to say A. They're going for A, but the person who wrote this quiz is. Uh, 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 you don't know uh, what the value is. It's going to be wrong. Here we go. I, I told you. 
Americans love to wow. uh, love to own things. They they value material wealth and sometimes equate better uh, quality of life to having more material possessions. I don't know about that. Oh, but this is the first the first one that doesn't look like propaganda. No, so this is saying no. I agree. This one is like uh, consumerism is bad, but Americans mm -hmm. still love it because <laughs> yes. they're crazy. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. I think you knew the right one, though. For decades, people shopped and acquired goods by going to stores and buying items off the shelf. Then in the late 1900s, an American company started selling books online, uh, Amazon. It soon expanded its model to begin to sell all other products online and now has sale sales numbers in the billions of dollars. Th this company's model has changed the face of retail dramatically. Why is this a value? <laughs> <laughs> okay this quiz is is completely going off the rails because i feel like it's no longer talking about values now it's just saying like this is a random true thing about that happened now what's the value that it reflects i don't i don't think i, I think it's very difficult to 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 talk really um seriously about american va values I think every place has its own unique values, but you could say some about America, like individualism, the first question. I feel mm. like that one's real. That one's very real. Mm. And um, mm. maybe self-confidence would be another one. That one's probably pretty real. Mm. But other than that, a consumerism is not necessarily a value. It's just true. <laughs> it's kind of unfortunate, and it's kind of, we're kind of ashamed of it, but... <laughs> Now I am tempted to to vote for the wrong wrong one always. <laughs> okay, but you want to do it? No, 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 no. Let's go with it. All right. Uh, disruptive innovation. This is propaganda for sure, right? Hmm. Like, look at all the look at the things that America made. This one feels like propaganda. Yes, but it's true. I think it's true. It's I mean, more, but but it's it's more true for uh, Japanese people, I think. Don't you think? Yeah, that is true. Well, because there's a lot of pressure on Japan to innovate because Japan is so resource scarce. There's so few natural resources in Japan <laughs> that innovation is their natural resource in a way. So mm -hmm. their whole Japanese economy relies on their artistic, technological innovation right yeah the first country i think of when innovation is japan probably hmm. george's parents jorge's parents immigrate to the united states where they raise him and his two siblings as they grow up jorge's siblings graduate high school and immediately begin working they both choose to work uh over college in order to uh maybe during college in order to help support the family on the other hand, Jorge desires an education. He pushes himself through high school and eventually... Oh, I'm sorry, I misread that. The original sentence was confusing me. They both chose work over college, meaning they worked instead of going to college in order to support uh. the family. I thought they, they meant to say something like they were working during college and they made a mistake, mm. but that's actually correct. On the other hand, Jorge desires an education. He pushes himself throughout high school and eventually lands a scholarship to attend college. He becomes the first member of his family to attend and graduate from university. Which American value does this scenario reflect? Meritocracy. Meritocracy, yeah. for sure. Meritocracy. I, yeah. I kind hate of an easy one. meritocracy. You hate it? Concept, yes. I, Tell I me why. Because they make people, this concept makes people think that uh, poor people is poor because they are not uh, making the effort. Yeah, that's a good point. Hmm. And in fact, it's because they're in a circumstance that makes it hard to, even if you put in a lot of effort, get up to, like if you're exactly. born... If you're born in a certain circumstance, you can try a little bit and get way ahead. 
But if you're born in another, you can work really hard and not even get up to where the other person started. Mm -hmm. Exactly. On the other hand, though, I'm not a big fan of equality of outcome type stuff. Like, let's make sure everyone gets the same end result. Um, I think I, I prefer the focus on giving as many people the same opportunities as possible and then mm -hmm. getting them to the same starting line because I think the individual hard work and, and um, creativity is very important and you can't diminish that. Um, uh, but getting people up to the same starting point is, is good, I think. Exactly. <clears throat> but, but giving people the same thing no matter what they do, like at the mm -hmm. end of a competition, everyone gets a participation mm -hmm. trophy. This I don't like because then it turns off the incentive to actually work hard. I think hard work is good. Mm -hmm. yes. I think that's equality of outcome versus equality of opportunity. Yes, I agree. Change. No, can't. <laughs> okay, a couple more. Natasha moves to the United States in her early 20s and later becomes a citizen. Years later, she gets... Uh, electrocuted, oh no, elected to political <laughs> office <laughs> where she proudly serves her community. Oh no, Natasha, why did you do it? You became one of them. Uh, big mistake. Yeah, I think, I think it is effective use of time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, this is the wrong answer, but it is actually true. They want us to say this one, but it should be this one. Because, it's, yeah, <laughs> what a terrible way to... Years, to years later, wow. Yeah, you you wasted your life, Natasha. You blew it. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Equality is the belief that all humans are created equal uh, and are equal in value. Uh, well, okay. I feel like if someone decides to become a politician, they have a a problem, mental problems. You have to have certain mental problems to become a politician, to make that choice, to say, I would like to be a politician. You are at that point, that's almost a, a diagnosis. <laughs> it's I, I just don't, yes. why would anyone child, want to do that? I, I, when I was a child, I admired like a hero, uh, Che Guevara. You know? uh -huh. Later, I, I, I thought, Think if you want to to be that guy, you 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 have to be uh, you have to 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 be like a psychopathic or something like that. Yeah. Well, Che Guevara <laughs> wasn't exactly a politician, though. No, but I, I thought about that because many people think they want to be a politician because because they want to make the world better right. uh, through politics, right? Yeah. But in order to the irony is in order to become to you, you have the original intention to change the world. You become you, you become part of the political machine and then you get so corrupted that you forgot your original intention. Yeah. And you feel inside like you're doing the right thing, but actually you're just part of this big, gross machine. <laughs> yes. OK, two more. Sam's parents are getting older and need more and more support. But Sam just got an amazing job offer uh, on the side of, on the other side of the country. She decides to accept the position to further. He, I said she. Uh, for some reason, in my mind, Sam is a female. Sam's a girl's name. He anyway. He decides to accept the position to further that, his career. Despite their protest. That's the reason you, you thought uh, Sam and Frodo or Sam were gay. Oh, they are. Sam was gay. <laughs> yeah, which, is, which I'm okay with. I think that's fine. Do you think they're not? No, because I, I think Sam is a, a boy name. Hmm. For some reason of Sam, when I think of Sam, I think of Samantha. I think of Sam Samuel. Samwise? No, Samuel. Samuel. Oh. Samuel. Sam and Sam and Lord of the Rings is Samwise. Yeah. Okay, uh, so directness, right? No. 
what's the real <laughs> answer? What's I, I, the, uh, I, I think uh, in it's, I, I think it is not independence. It is individualism. Okay, there no. I, I'm clicking down here. I'm not getting anything. Uh, there are no no other options. This quiz is unfortunately very binary, and whoever wrote it, I think, was in a hurry. Um, the person who wrote the quiz believes in individualism, so they can they make quizzes like this. They can do whatever they want. <laughs> yes, it's a but but I don't think it is really independence. I agree. I agree. This quiz is off the rails. I totally agree. Last question. Americans tend to value independence and self-determination. That doesn't mean not not taking care of your parents, but okay. Uh, how do you? What about you? I mean, if parents get older, do they send them to a nursing home? What what, what do you do? I don't know. Let's talk about that other day. All right. Last question. Uh, I'm getting hungry. Are you going to? You're going to dinner with a bunch of friends. Some want to go to a local cafe. Others to a new restaurant that just opened. To make the final decision, the group decides to take a vote. The majority want to go to a new restaurant. So that is where gonna... they, they want me to put democracy in, in this. <laughs> they uh... really, really want it. <laughs> they didn't know how to make that. <laughs> You're not going to do it, are you? <laughs> go with this one. No, no, no. Put, put democracy because I want to, to, to have the... The, the higher uh, well you've already i mean it's already all right we'll go with that okay anyway Th this is definitely propaganda right now <laughs> all right great job eight out of ten eighty percent nice job. Let, let me tell you something i think how because i think democracy the democratic value in the united states it, it's not very true for, for, from my point of view, but how how would, would if you really wanted to put uh, some situation that represents uh, the democracy value in the uh, um, day day, uh, day normal day yeah daily life yeah daily life uh, what what situation would you put there. Um... I really do feel like some people in in real life would do the would vote on the restaurant thing. I think that that's something that I think that that's something that might actually happen. I've seen people do things like that, um, like a vote. Um, but I think um, that's a tough one to talk about in daily life because. Democracy is a value politically, but is it a value in daily life? I don't know. Most of the time, I think not. Yes, yes, it is because, for for example, when I was um, in in when I when I were in high school, there were the uh, um, student center, and and we we voted uh, with other students about uh, political decisions, but regarding to the school itself. Yeah. Do you, do you have that? Um, there? There's something called the Model UN. Uh, it's like a United Nations model to pra practice polit global politics, and then no, 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 no. But that. But I then there's a student think... body. There's a student body election where you elect a president and a treasurer and a vice president within your your year. Ah, uh, yes, happens. yes. Ah, uh, okay. That 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 would be. But I still don't know if that's a daily life thing, right? No, no, that's right. Yes. Yeah. All Demo right. Democratic well, is is to is okay. Okay. No. Another day we we can talk about that. What is and what is and what is not democratic? It's interesting, but it's very broad. Yeah, exactly. Well, what do you think it is? <clears throat> it's very complex. I need to think. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think I think uh, in daily life. In simple. daily life. In daily I think it's life. just. I think it. Well, it does. In daily life, it's just not as formal. 
but do you want to make decisions based on what you think the mo the majority wants? Yes, and to listen to what the other person uh, needs. Yeah, I think it would be the willingness to give up on your preference if most other people want something else. I think that would be a good mm -hmm. definition. Like, I really want Italian food, but it's clear to me that everyone else wants to eat Thai. So, all right, we'll go eat Thai. That would be democracy in, in daily yes, life. Yes, um, it's very related to freedom of expression. Freedom of expression, I think. You have to be able to say your opinion in order to... Yeah, I agree. That makes sense. Well, speaking of, <coughs> of making dem democratic decisions about food, I'm really hungry, so um, it's time for my lunch. What do you think? It's the same for me. Yes, yes, I need to eat. I'm, I'm one hour uh, later than you. Oh, yikes. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks so much for doing this, Pablo. It's been fun. Um, appreciate it. Hope Thank we, you, hope we can do another one soon. Um, uh, I'll, I'll talk to soon, you on please. WhatsApp. Please, WhatsApp. Please, please. <laughs> yes. Thanks for Thank watching you. everybody. See you next time. Bye. Bye.